Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, good afternoon or good evening or good morning, depending on where you are in the world. It is the Saturday Human Colony uh, Saturday webinar with Jim Charles, who will be channeling today. Um, in our room, I will just like to announce everybody, just so I can go through. We have Typhus, we have Stephanie, Sheer, Peter, Marlene, Jim, of course, and myself, Karen Newman, Christine, and Amanda. Oh, I have also feedback. Please do ignore that. We have Stephanie, Sheer, Peter. Okay, that was crazy. Yeah, that's an echo. So, Jim, if you'll announce the people in your room, that's the uh, YouTube go with the okay, nice delay. Okay, so. um, I have Angie and Lana and Barb and John and Will and Giovanna and Ray, and we're expecting Carolyn. All right, thank you very much. Um, just to just to get started, I just want to go through a few announcements that we have. Uh, we have. Coming up in the, uh, actually coming up, you still have time to register for the Galactic Reiki Level 1 class with Jim at Takur, and that will be the 25th and the 26th of November at 3 p.m. EDT till 6 p.m. And if you go to the website, humancolony.org, you can, you can learn all about it. And then uh, also we have the Sedona Workshop, which will be in Sedona, Arizona, and I'm just pulling up the information should just give me one moment so that I can talk about it. It's going to be the February the 1st through the 6th, 2018. It'll be taught by Jim and Max and Jonathan Martin, uh, Yaya Yael Chandler will also be there. The workshop, uh, workshop topics will be group ascension work, earth grid and vortex work, galactic Reiki, Ushu Reiki, telepathy, channeling and chanting. And all classes are instruction, instructed by Jim and by Max. And you can join that workshop for $575, and that will include your housing. So if you want to, please go to humancolony.org. Hi, Karen. Hi. Hi. Who's that? Oh, uh, we got someone else named Karen coming in, so that wasn't talking oh. to you. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi, Karen. I'm Jim. Okay. Yes. We're in a 20 oh, people actually, room right here. I have several phone calls to return. Oh, we have a full <laughs> full frontal of Jim, which is always very interesting. So, huh? okay, so I was just saying we, we had we had the full on of just your shirt there for a second. Yes. <laughs> well, a, a beautiful stomach it is, isn't it? It's just lovely. It was it was very it has its much own name, for Christmas. Name, so. Yeah. <laughs> So just in the room, we have, some, um, we have some requests. Maybe we can list them again if you're able to maybe. Uh, people have asked for Elijah, for Ashtar, for the sun, for Alika, or Alika, however Elika. you say it. Alika. Alika. Yeah. And I think Chakur, and I'm not mm -hmm. sure if there's anybody else. Uh, Ayahuasca. Mother Ayahuasca or something. Mother Ayahuasca as well, yes. And a Mayan, um, Mayan uh, elder. And a Mayan elder, yeah. A god? A Mayan god? What is, the, what is that? You a mean Mayan, that year? Mayan gods? Mayan gods. Yeah, the elders. Right. The Mayan I don't elders. know any Mayan yeah. gods. Uh, what are their names? Uh, Lord Pakal, Kukul Khan, and those uh, folks? Yes, oh, like okay. Pakal Botan. Pakal Botan? Yes. I've never heard of that name, so... Whoever comes through, I hope I can pronounce your name correctly. Well, so, hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Very good. Um, who wants to do the blessing then to start? Anyone wants to do the blessing? I'll do one. Barb will do one in here. Okay, Anybody Barbara. online? Sit in that chair so we can see you because there's no point yes. in you being away from where we can't see you. That's you're, you're, cheating, yeah. you're cheating the viewing audience. Hi Thank there. You. Thank you. Hi. I'm a little embarrassed, but okay. Doshuroto yata tokoroto wata. Takaroto titi nana tutu wata kinona. Ida tutu tutu shuni nata taka napa tati ataka na shuroto. Tiha naka dokoroto tata tana pati atako shi atato. Taka nati o taka taki atakawa. Tiga mati o tu tu ya tata. 
May the light shine through you and you'll be guided by honesty, truth, and wisdom. May the light also be on your path continuously. Make sure that you are checking yourself daily and securing all your thoughts. For you are an example in the world and it is important to be the best example at this time that you can be. Your love is eternal, so remember to use it daily and often. Keep it shining and keep it full. We will be with you and help you to maintain a good and powerful illusion in this world. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have a blessing? Are we ready to go? Oh, there's another blessing here. Do you want to? Yes, perfect. Will, there we go. Will. Uh, yes, can you see me? <laughs> yes. Very well. <laughs> I can't even say that one. She cooks in another year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> To sonuna ayech cha, sasaka unan ti tiniata hauta, is sahachi tiki to goa shishai, sachakahuna nashia, sasaka tatahia tatari shikuhuna nabi, so takai shishikayat, nare sekia, shisho, rawara takaya, sakananihi, sawachikia. Eternity waits for you. But do not long to leave this world until your mission is finished. There is much to do, and many need help, and many need the light that you can provide for them. So put your eyes on the world and pray for them with the greatest love in your heart. Try to grow and be the part of what it is that you are. Be yourself, but do not overcompensate for the thoughts that you are not worthy awesome oh hello Thank hello you. hi carolyn <laughs> carolyn's here now too hi carolyn welcome so, we'll just so we have a very cool again. house today yes three four chairs all right hi carolyn it's good to see you it's been a while <laughs> oh, nice. All righty then. Okay. Uh, we're ready when you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, we're ready when you're ready. Okay, I'm going to do a meditation now, and I'm not sure who is coming first, but we'll see. There's a lot of a lot of entities here, and. It's interesting because when each person comes in, they bring their own uh, group of entities with them. So we have a crowd here today. <laughs> so I'll see who wants to come through. All right. Well, we look forward to it. So see you on the Much other love side. love and talk to you later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Greetings, I am Elijah. Today I would like to speak to you in very brief terms about the power of words. This is a day and age where words have great meaning and great power when released into the atmosphere. Remember, if you are being negative, if you are using negative words constantly, You will change the atmosphere because when you use negative connotations and words, they do have power. Let me also say that when you surround yourself with positivity and the words that go with 
the with spirituality positivity and you and all the things that are with you you see you bring in a greater power as of good works and of example when you use these words you may not think that words have much power but when you are around certain people and they are speaking in a certain way you are affected by these people and how they speak do not be fooled by the fact that they may seem like a very good person but seem to speak only negative words they are bringing themselves down they are not creating a please help them with your own example or know that the words that they are saying are affecting their lives many of these people that have negative words attached to them all day long you will find have great pain they have illnesses they have darknesses and they will not always be in the best of frames of mind but those that use greater and more positive words seem to be up more often it's not that they never get down but they seem to have a greater advantage when it comes to positivity even those that have illnesses and pains that use positive wording seem to have a greater life a greater mission and a greater way of presenting themselves is there any questions about this no but i i would just i don't know if there's any questions i'll just give people a chance to respond but this is particularly what i'm studying at the moment so thank you so very much interesting remember yeah. this there is power in these words mm -hmm. and how they are used so you may bring up your energy levels uh, people think that um if they're in a bad mood speaking positive words will not affect anything this is not true it is absolutely necessary to start saying thank you praise you or i want to in be in a better frame of mind when you're not in a good mood so that your words can start bringing up the energy in the room it is a proven fact that words when spoken in a positive way will affect things does anybody have any questions I don't see any in the in the group, but if there's it's possibly very, someone very, in the room, it's a very yeah. simple concept. Yeah. So I'm not surprised. So I <laughs> do have one question. Yes. Um, when we're in a bad mood or acknowledging the current feelings, correct? What does the acknowledgement itself do? It makes you aware of what needs to be done. When you acknowledge that this is how you are feeling, if you acknowledge that you are feeling good or bad, if this lets you know what frame of mind that you are in and where you need to go. If you are already in a positive frame, you can still go up higher. But if you can't, if you are in a lower frame and you realize it, this is the time to start using the positive words to move out of that out of that frame now there are times when you feel very low and you just do not feel like using any positive words you do not feel like being positive in any way you are just there and you have no strength to move forward but there is still breath in your lungs so force a few positivities out and you will see that they will help in some way some people said to me that didn't help that's because you were not thinking that they would help if you believe they can help they can help your belief system is important about how to express yourself believe that you can change the atmosphere believe that it is possible you know 
that you live in a very solid world, but you're starting at, to know as abstract fourth dimensional people that the abstract exists, that things outside of your world exist, that energies are can be very positive and you can call on these things anytime. So remember, this is an extraordinary age you live in and you can use the energy in the air. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. That was a short message, and now there's others that would like to come because you have questions for them more than me. But I had to stop in and say hello and bring you a small message today. Well, it's always Much a pleasure. Love. Many Thank blessings. And Thank you. be well. Be well. Greetings, I'm Alaika. And how is everyone today? Thank you. It's nice to meet you, Alaika. I haven't yet spoken with you, but everyone's oh, I speak, good. I speak to many. <laughs> but it's nice to meet you. And it's nice to speak to you and feel your energy. Thank I you. love that. Thank you. And I know that there are questions out there for me, to start, so I will let them ask them first. Who in the room has a question? I don't have anybody's ones, but there was a person that requested a Leica, so that should probably. Yes, that should. That really I believe share. I have a question. Share, why don't you ask a question then? Go ahead, Share. Hello, Leica, how are you? I am very well. And yourself? <laughs> I'm uh, also well. Started to study. Of course, I know that. You're <laughs> studying agriculture in some form. Yeah, uh, water technologies. Yes. Excellent. Um, I was wondering if you ever had um, a reincarnation on Earth? I have not yet had a reincarnation on Earth. I do speak to those that have had reincarnations on earth that are creator beings and they are doing very well there this is not my area of space to reincarnate into at this moment so that is why i have not come to earth in that particular way now i am here for all of the universe to be a guide and a help but to reincarnate into it n not at this time that is not my uh mission I see um, but I see that there are those of you such as yourself that have done so and we are we will reunite one day as friends in the creator realm yeah I'm uh, looking forward to it also I see that a lot of people don't know who you are and your background so maybe you want to introduce yourself just so people I, would know what to ask you I am a creep. Introduce myself any other way, but I am a help to those on the earth. I speak to many humans about their missions and give them encouragement and move them forward with energies. I also help them in the astral with some of their missions that they do, because I can do that. According to many, I have helped them do this and that. Of course, I know what I've done, but um, they seem to think I do even more than what I actually do. But um, I do help in the in the astral uh, fields and do help them with vortexes, with um, alignments, with uh, hybridizations and things of this nature, with uh, different things on the planet that need uh, work with the grids and the and the and the uh, power sources. Yes, I am here for that. Did you say but I that will not incarnate at this time? My time on Earth will not be for quite a while yet. 
Did you just say that you also help with hybridization? Can you tell something about that? How do you help those with... Well, I do help because um, I help it become successful. I do not do the hybridization myself, but I do help it and give it energy so that it may uh, move forward successfully. So I give some energy to it, yes, because hybridization is important. You see, your people are a hybrid species. You have always, beginning, you have been seeded in many different ways. Look at all your different cultures and looks and ways about you. And there came a time when your peoples had to look somewhat similar. So that was uh, done. And But you are a hybrid species that will help the galaxy once you become friendly with it. Yeah, we can and the reason the hybridization is important is because so many have helped you seed this society. So many species have been a part of it that it will help those species that have uh, seeded you to become more healthy on the planet most of the time. It strengthens the, the species. Seeds. And that is what it's doing now in your species so that you may become strong and help with your DNA at some point. Now, there would be those species that would want to harvest humans or DNA or whatever, but that is not permitted and will not happen. But you must volunteer your DNA at some point to help the galaxy and universe. Thank you very much, and thank you for coming. You're, you're welcome. It is good to be here. There is a good energy here, and there's many that want to speak. So if there are no questions, there are others that will, and perhaps there will be questions. Oh, yeah, of course. Just uh, told you thank you, not... Uh... Oh, not goodbye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Is there any other questions, though? Uh, Typhus had a I question do... for you, if that's okay. Who does? Typhus84 from Canada. Very well. Hello, Typhus. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I am very well. It's uh, wonderful to feel your energy. Enjoy I was out. Yourself. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I do have a question. I, uh, over yes. the last week and a half, uh, I've felt the presence of one gray twice and a man in a fedora hat, which I believe was like an MIB person. Uh, during yes. that time, it wasn't like a very positive experience for me. I was wondering if you could elaborate on that a little bit. It was not a positive uh, experience because uh, gray energies, especially when you have a neutral or a negative gray in your presence, uh, their energy is far different than human energy. And so it does not mix with your energy very well. So you would not uh, feel them in a very positive way. Now, this particular gray, Cora Peen is his name. And he really um, wants to make association with you because you do have some gray in your, um, your makeup, in your DNA. So... He is looking to see if you have any gray traits, of any gray thought processes, and he wanted to see any of your actions. Now, since you've grown your hair out, he sees that as a gray trait. Why? Because they are bald, and you are trying to systematically, uh, as a human, um, they don't, they don't like being bald, by the way, and so. You are just re repulsed by the baldness and you grew it out. So, the <laughs> thing that he noticed about you that he figured was possibly a gray trait, and he's probably correct. I do not know. But you also have um, that you do like this the thoughts that grays have at certain points, even though their energy. 
are very hybrid with the human race. And so you do have some interesting thought. The karma of the world is made up of all the people, of all the different karmas of the air that are being experienced at the moment. So the gray karma is in the air uh, because there are some humans that are very gray acting, attracted to uh, negativity and zeta gray activity. But then again, there, there are other grays that are not negative, but their energy is still very different. So you have to understand that you it may feel like a negative experience, but they may not be there for a negative reason. We can't hear you. You have to unmute yourself. Yep. Uh, thank you very much for your input. I really uh, you appreciate are, it. Uh, the conversation was rather glitchy for me. Um, so I heard maybe 60% mm, of it, unfortunately. Well, yes, you are frozen now and then. So I, th I see that that would be a problem. I Can you comment on the man in the fedora hat? And the man in the fedora hat is a is a uh, relative from past lives. Ah, wonderful. He is actually not a, a grandfather figure, but he is an uncle from three generations ago, or perhaps even four, four generations ago. And he is there because you are very much like him. He wore his hair very much like you did, or you are wearing it at this time. Your thought processes are very positive like his. He was a very successful man. He was wealthy in some ways. Um, he wasn't considered a millionaire or anything of that nature, but he, he did have a, a, a quite a bit of wealth. And he did have an office in the... in the local government. So he is actually, I believe, a spirit guide for you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Appreciate You're welcome. <laughs> okay, uh, Jim, we do have a question from the, uh, we have a question from the YouTube. Can I just ask that for you? Yes, go ahead and have... then we have one here in the room. Okay, per fine. Um, we have, um, the, the case from space is asking the question, how, vorte how are vortexes used? Do they help with interactions between species? They are vortexes. Let me tell you what they are. First of all, the first use is for energy. There are vortexes that release fourth dimensional energy into your planet so that your planet is slowly becoming a planet. And this has started since 2012, and it will continue until you reach the next uh, era or next part of your evolution. And it is one use for vortexes. Now, there are energy vortexes also for humans, idolize us and can help you with many things. Now, and there are vortexes that are help in space. Let me explain that. There are vortexes that are all the way up and down the uh, western coast of your United States, where they have many, many volcanoes and earthquakes and things of that nature. And these vortexes are holding that area in place. They are holding it in place because there can be a time when uh, these will be shaken and it is not necessarily meant for that area to fall into the ocean or be underwater. So they are protecting that area at least for this time. Thank you for that very much. Well, there's other uses as well, but I think that where I think that those are three very good examples. So vortexes 
that uh, such as black holes and things of that nature, which are actually vortexes that do other things. Yeah. They condense matter and things of this nature. But the ones that are that are there on your planet are the ones that are for positive use for the most part. I understand. Thank you very much. What other question is there here? Yeah. Barbara is coming to ask a question. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, get in front of the camera so they see you. I think they like that better. Here? What, wherever. Yeah. My question is, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like a feeling that I'm getting from up above that is going to be guiding me into something or moving me into something. Sure. I feel it, but I can't figure out what it is. Do you? Yeah. Yes. All right. Spiritual guidance always comes in different ways to to everyone. Everyone is a unique individual, and they feel spiritual guidances in different ways. This is just another form of spiritual guidance. You have been uh, truthful and awakened to the energies of the universe and God. And, and the spirit of you, that there is something there for you. And you're feeling the energy of that. Some people will feel it inside feel it coming from a distance or from outside some people it comes as a chill or a vibration or some other way but everyone is unique and God works with you each in a unique way and so as you are moving forward in your mission and you are praying to God and asking for things to be revealed to you And, and things to be you and develop to you. But you know that is happening, and so that is an indication that you should be paying attention to um, the future and the nearby. Uh, it's something nearby, actually. Well, there's something else, too, that came up <clears throat> you were talking. Is I'm feeling closer to our galactic brothers and sisters of course. are coming to me. Yes. Well, you are... You're in touch with galactic beings. So um, many of you are in touch with galactic beings. I am a spirit. I am a creator being. So I am not exactly what you would consider an alien. But there are aliens around you in corporeal bodies in fourth dimension, fifth dimension, third dimension. And so you have some with them. their energy in a way that is uh, the way it's supposed to be. You have been around them long enough to gain a friendly indication from them and are reaching back to them and letting them know that you are of their their uh, company. So I'm also starting to see them in a way, but not completely. In a, what way are you seeing them? It's like a shadow. Many people oh. have fourth dimensional energy open. I... I know of many that can see aliens, but not fully. Mm -hmm. They cannot see them in the third dimension because they are not there. They are in fourth dimension or holograph or whatever, astral, and some with great amounts of fourth dimensional energy or with the certain areas of the brain open to fourth dimensional energy can actually start to see um, beings around them. So it is, it is going to be more common as time moves forward that perhaps more of you, there are others in this room that see aliens, not fully and, and not like they're standing next to you in a corporeal body, but you actually see their outlines, silhouettes, energy signatures. Sometimes you just see their eyes. Sometimes you just see their energy. Sometimes you see their silhouette. It is true. This is going to happen more often, and it will be a proof to many that the aliens are there. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, uh, we have a question from Christine. Go ahead, Christine. Hello. How are you? Christine, how are you? Whoa, my cat just took off. Um, I wanted to ask you, um, 
due to the vortexes and the different energy and everything around um, Earth, in um, I was wondering if there's a vortex or a weird energy going on around um, the Boston River where um, they've been finding um, young men disappearing and then all of a sudden reappearing dead maybe uh, a month later or something like that? There is, is there someone some that's doing that. That is... That is actually a, a serial killer. Oh, okay. Um, it is not anything to do with anything uh, astro or from outer space. Okay. Um, so, so sending energy. This is a very sad situation. I am yeah. aware of it. Okay. So sending Perfect. energy there to clean it up, would that help? Or Yes. Prayer capture? is helpful in every way. It might curtail the killer from picking up uh, someone who might have some spiritual uh, insights and know that this is not a safe person. Okay. okay. Yes, all prayer and all um, positive energy is helpful. If it is their time, though, they will be gone. Is it wrong for me also to um, pray that this person's caught, or should I just let it, you know, since no, everybody's that is fine. It is oh, okay. fine that you pray for justice. Justice is okay. a good thing to pray for, because many people say, oh, it sounds, it doesn't sound right, it doesn't sound loving, or whatever, to pray for that. But remember this, when you love the world, you want justice for all people. You want justice, love, and uh, fairness for all people. Isn't that part of unconditional love? And yes. so that does not mean you are wishing bad things on these people, but you are wishing them to turn to the light. You're wishing them to turn around and see the good. parts of the world now that is not wrong to pray for justice and for, pray that those that are negative and are not lost or or whatever the word is you want to use in a positive way that is not a bad thing to do it is what is intended for humanity to do for their own world okay thank you very much, thank you very much. you're welcome Thank you. Um, our good friend Brian Sims is in the uh, in the chat, and he would like to know if there is any timeline about actual first contact. That's what he would like to know. Oh my! That word is thrown around so much, and it can be it it actually means so many things to so many people at this time. First contact, um, in its truth. He said well, be, real I, open contact, just to be, just to be, and how close is humanity for real open contact, just to be clear? Um, well, let me put it this way. Parts of humanity are ready. Parts of humanity are open. And parts of humanity say, I want it now. There's other parts that are saying it doesn't exist. There's other parts that saying we don't want it. There's other parts that say it's they're negative beings. There are many, many thought processes going on about aliens in general. Now, those thought processes have got to change to some degree before aliens can actually come to your planet, or I should say visitors. Because are they really so alien? They've been here many, many thousands of times. Many, many millions of times, actually, if you want to count going back thousands and thousands of years. So they are wanting to revisit your world when you are ready for them to revisit. Now, like I said, many of you are ready, but many of you are not. Many places are not ready. And when they get a little bit closer, it will be time. And I don't see that as being that far away, except, um, let me tell you this. Many situations are piling up one on top of another. Many events, I should say, 
and these events will open the eyes of your people. And as you have the people open their eyes, they will understand that there is greater spirituality out there, that there's things beyond their imagination, that their third dimensional existence is only a small part of the universe. When this happens, first contact will be needed. We missed that oh, last oh, bit I... because you're freezing just a little bit. We've been freezing off and on. So we missed that. You said first contact will be and then it froze. So maybe that was maybe meant we to be. But... <laughs> um, we have not seen the freezing, but um, what did I say? I just said that the events that are going to happen in the future to wake up the people of the earth, it will open their eyes many of them, to the existence of spirituality, to the existence that they are not alone in the galaxy, that there's things beyond third dimension, and that they are very much a very small part of the universe. And this will wake up your people, and at that time, contact will be near. Did I freeze that time? You did not. Thank you so very much. There's a question from Navir in the chat. Nivir. Uh, hi, oh, Anika. It's uh, Nivi. How are you? Greetings. How are you? Uh, I'm doing really well. Um, actually, I'm, I have a question for you. Uh, I work on my uh, positive momentum, being in a mode of allowance, removing resistance, and uh, increasing, attracting uh, my desires. Uh, can you suggest any practices I can use to increase my manifestation speed and quality? You are doing a good job at this time, but you must remember that third dimension gets in the way of, of bringing all these things to yourself. And also, uh, the, your mission is on a timely basis. And sometimes uh, patience is learned before some of the gifts are given. So do not be too discouraged because you are on the right track and you are doing the right things. Now, I want you to understand that you are a light being, and you know that already, but picture yourself in a light being situation. When you, when you are looking at yourself, you are the perfect light being. When you do your meditations or prayers, whatever it is that you do to contact the outer world, Picture yourself as a light being so that you may be able to contact other light beings in a different way than you have been doing so. I would like to see that you unify with them in a, a little bit of a conference, in a light being conference where they will give you some more energies, they will give you some more ideas and enlightenment. Now, as far as getting all the things that you need, they also are aware of what you need, want, and desire, and will that will come at the appropriate times when you are ready for them. At this moment, you're still uh, growing in thought processes. You're still uh, creating uh, a sense of a greater mission, and they are helping you do so. So I should work uh, to contact um, beings um, that are close to me, beings that are connected to my mission? You will be, just picture yourself as a light being and they will be with you. Because as you look at yourself as a light being and fill yourself with light, other light beings will be attracted to that. And you will feel their presence. Others of you can do the same thing. You can see yourself beings that you are and attract those to you that are around you. Now, I am sometimes attracted to those situations because I see what is necessary and I can help. If I cannot help the situation, which usually I can, but not always, I will be there definitely. Thank you very much, Elika. Much love. You're welcome.
Um, Christine had a quick question for you. Yes. Yes, I was wondering, um, instead of calling um, ETs extraterrestrials or something else, is there another name that's a lot more friendly or understanding? Well, visitors is good, or neighbors, but because that's what they really are. But right. they do not mind these other words. The reason why they do not mind the words aliens or, well, they do sort of get upset about extraterrestrials, the word extraterrestrial is because they're not part of your uh, your world and they're not extra from your world. Okay. So they sort of say, we're not extraterrestrials. We are aliens mm -hmm. or we are visitors or, okay. but they don't really get upset about anything that you call them because they realize that you don't know really who they are yet. So they would prefer to be called by name if you knew them. But if you don't, visitor, friend, neighbor. Okay. Okay. That's good. Thank you. That's very You're good welcome. information. Yep. What? I said that's very good information. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And one more question. Uh, Lily Plaid Paula had a question. She said, I was told that I had a Pleiadian in my makeup. Can you tell me what kind of Pleiadian? It's a Pene. If you have a, a blue Pleiadian, actually you have more than one. So I can tell you that there is a little bit of blue Pleiadian there, and there's a little bit of Nord there, and also uh, the short, uh, the short blue Pleiadians have a, a touch in there too. So there's a lot of Pleiadian mix in you. You seem to have uh, gravitated toward a mix of Pleiadian uh, positivities. Thank you for that. You're I don't, welcome. Are there any more questions in your room? Because we don't seem to have any more in our room. All right, very oh, well. Peter does have a question. I'm sorry. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, hi, Alika. This is Peter. Much love. Um, I have hi, Peter. Question. I have a quick question. Uh, what kind of entities are around me? Entities. Well, they come and they go. But right now around you there is a Syrian, which is a very light kind of energy. Do you feel that? Um, it's a very light energy. It's a very soft energy. It's actually a female named Sumtia. Sontia. Okay, thank you. Um, there's also a, a Pleiadian, but he is not as close. He's far, he's over in the corner, and uh, he doesn't want to be recognized, but he is a green Pleiadian from um, the uh, Pleiadian systems, of course, and um, his name is Gary Anzaves. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I have another question. Yes, a question here. Perfect. There's an insectoid that I'm connected with, with a praying mantis. And I feel that we've been communicating back and forth in his language. Yes. Uh, can I uh, find out his name? Um, one moment, see if I can connect with him. Is he around your home? I. Or I'm is he around you uh, other places? Yes. Does he follow you? He does follow you when you walk. He's not the only one, yes. Yes, I know that you have more than one connection. One moment, please, and I will check with that. I do not usually talk many to many Pleiadians. I mean, not insectoids, I mean, because they are not in my uh, realm of understanding as far as I understand them. It's not that. But they are not in usually my understanding as far as their makeup as a species, how they act. Ah, like I, I do not appreciate some of them, but this one is more friendly. All right, let's see. I do love all insects though, <laughs> and insectoids. His name is, one moment, Baikara. Baikara. Ah, ah, You're welcome. So there, yes, but not that 
I don't appreciate insectoids, but they do very little to uh, further the good of the universe at times. And sometimes that's that makes me a little upset with them, but I still love them and I think that they're wonderful. They're getting better. They're getting better all the time. Perfect. Thank you so much. Marlene has a question. Marlene. Adonai. Hello. Hello. Um, my question is concerning the Kumara, uh, the Kumara people. Um, where are they from, and what is their work or their mission, as an over as an overall? Please. I did not hear the question. You froze. Um, the question is concerning the Kumara people, the Kumara yes. beings. Uh, where are them. they? Yes, and where, where are they from, and what uh, is their work or their mission? Pertaining they have to several life. places. They have several places around the universe where they where they live at this time. But they also have some underground uh, subterranean areas in the Earth that they are. But they're not a huge population on the Earth. But they are from us uh, originally from Cygnus. And they are, their mission is just one of peace and love, and they do spread that around the galaxies. And they are very, a very ancient species, and they are a very loving species, and they're very high in their dimension. They're a high fifth dimensional species, almost sixth dimensional. So they are, they're very, very wonderful. Oh, is there something specific? you wanted to ask about them um, are they um, have they adopted Venus as their planet for the oh, they are, time being they are on Venus and mother Venus uh, lady Venus I should call her that's what she prefers lady Venus is very much uh, fond of them and they are interactive with Venus quite a bit they have not, I don't know if adopted is the right word, but they do spend so, uh, quite a bit of time working with the Venusians, yes. Thank you. I read that um, archangels and uh, perhaps Sanat Kumara and Sananda Kumara, those are all Kumaras, Master Kumaras. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, basically, that's what I wanted to know. Thank you so much. There was a question, I and I just don't know if, it, if, if you just answered it or not, but um, there's a person in the chat that Blue O wants to know is, who is Sanat Kamara? Is that, I'm sure, is Marlene, is that, would, you just mentioned that same word. Yes, she just mentioned yes. Sanat Kamara, and he's a very high, high being. Many th uh, revere him as a godlike individual. Okay. He is under God and he has as many of the qualities. He is still an alien species, but he is a wonderful and most loving and incredible being. Okay. Thank you so very much. I don't see any more yeah. questions on our side. Uh, I don't know. All if right, excellent. The room. Perhaps it's time for someone else to grace your presence. Well, we were very pleased to have you here. Thank you so very much for your time. Oh, you are welcome. So welcome. No. And it was great to be here. I enjoy talking to the people of Earth. They are special to me. Especially at this time when you're so inquisitive and so beautiful so your fourth dimensional energy amazing so it, it will become even more amazing in the future but i'm i'm really really excited for you thank you again namaste bless much continue, love. continue to move forward ah namaste yes goodbye for now
Greetings, I am Takur. I heard that you requested my presence. Thank you, Takur. It's very nice to talk to you. Thank you. As yes, always. Your, request, your presence was requested by several people, so if, if there's someone with a question, please let me know. Well, first, let me give you an update. Yes, thank you. So, and right now, we are still working with the Earth energies. They are sometimes almost out of control. They are so wild. But it is because that the axis is trying to move. It is also that the sun energy has been very much a part of this um, crazy energy that you have been feeling. But right now, the sun energy is starting to diminish. Let me explain why it was so harsh. There was a period just a few weeks, maybe four weeks ago, where you had a very large CME uh, come from the sun. Well, it was not facing the earth at that time, but within several days, it was that area that released the large CME was facing the earth. And at that time, there was a lot of spikes and flares. And the area of the sun that that CME came from is very disturbed, it was very disturbed, and the energy was very restless. And so it sent that out to the earth, and you felt it quite harshly at times. So that is one of the reasons why many of you were up and down or felt very tense and nervous or perhaps even negative. You were trying to fight that off because there was a lot of interaction with sun energy. It is passing. You are no longer in, in an area where that is affecting the earth so much. But there are other energies. The earth energies are continuing to uh, develop, should I say, because since 2012, when the earth energies first changed, and then on each equinox of after that, they began to change uh, even more. The energies of the equinoxes have helped the earth energies uh, uh, Inc increase to bring certain things back into your realm or such as well there was magic in your realm before and there's it always existed but now it's ramping up it's becoming stronger and magic is now part of uh your the energies that are with you it's still very weak it's only at about six or seven percent developed but it's now starting to be used by those that understand it. And those, there have been those that understand magic for thousands and thousands of years when it was prevalent, and that has been passed down through many, many generations, and now it's starting to become a powerful uh, thing again. But it's not necessarily negative. It can be positive that you should work with it unless you know exactly what you're doing. But um, a great deal of study must go into that before you can practice positive and good magic. So to make it you aware that um, it is increasing, and that will be something that you will be feeling. You will be seeing magic actually occur around you in some ways also the other earth energies that are increasing will um, help you to evolve in in the ways you are supposed to evolve your your skin will become um softer and lighter and because even though it would appear to want your it would appear that your skin should start to turn a little harder because you have more rays of the sun and things of this uh, nature bombarding you it will become softer because of the earth energies and because of healing energies that are in the earth so your skin will be start to become slightly softer and you will startly start to become a little shorter and 
uh, you will start to evolve uh, in ways that telepathy will take over and things of this nature. But that is long term. Other things that are happening on your planet, we are still working with the wind and the rain and the snow and all the different um, weather uh, fronts that are crashing into different places. And also the earthquakes and volcanoes have never been more active. But we are helping Yellowstone not to explode. We were very worried about that for a long time because it had a great deal of energy and still has earthquakes happening there. But we have run off about 14% of the magma uh, to the southwest underground. And so that is helping the pressure there to subside a little. There's still quite a lot of pressure there, but uh, we're helping it to run off as much as we can. Is there any questions? Yes, we have quite a, quite a lot on this side, and I don't know about in your room, but we'll just start. Um, we have first typhus, and then th th there's a list. So typhus first. Yes, there you go. Hello, Takur. It's a pleasure to talk to you and be in your energy. Greetings. It's a pleasure as well. I, I won't be too long. I just want to ask a quick question. Um, some time ago, I received my master level Reiki attunement. Yes. And during this, and during this time, <laughs> I see you, Will. During this time, my mentor gave me another gift. But it was a vibrational gift. And now when I look at people, I'm able to see a number that pops up in my mind. And I don't right. know what that number is. I don't know if it's a dimensional frequency or vibrational frequency. It's a, it's a, it will give you an indication of what is going on with that person. Now, if you study your numerology, you will find out that this number will give you a clue into what is happening with this in individual. And that will help you with how you do your healing. Meaning if it's, if it's a mental, if they're going through stress or mental problems, if they're going through emotional problems, such as with the heart, or if their problems are continually physical, or perhaps you have a, a group of problems with certain individuals, or it may tell you that they need grounding, or that may tell you that they're, uh, uh, you need to uh, brighten their chakras. These numbers will give you extra information. Hmm. about what is going on with them. Now, you are, humans are going to find that uh, these energy modalities are going to get stronger. These energy modalities are going to get more popular. And why is that? Because it's more efficient. There's no side effects. They work directly on the problem, and they do not uh, cause any problems. Whereas chemicals in the system can hurt the organs, can cause side effects, can cause other diseases, whereas energy is efficient. And it is getting stronger. And with the belief systems growing as they are, Joe Ray, G, all these things will get stronger and more effective on your planet. And people will want to use them more efficient they go directly to the problem there's no side effects there's no impurities and so these are going to be preferred methods of medicinal use even with some herbs or or spices or whatever you use for healing there can be some uh, side effects or perhaps if it's not a pure product, there tends to be some toxins in it. But with energy, there is none of these things. So energy will be the uh, healer of the future. It is the healing modality of the future. Also, they, were going to, they are going to find ways to attach uh, technology to healing energies. And also light and vibration and colors, all these things are part of healing modalities 
and will be used in the future. And they are much purer and much more effective than chemi chemicals. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. Okay, uh, the next person is Sheer. Sheer. Great. Yeah. How are you? James. It's been a while. I really miss you. I miss you as well. Uh, well, I have so many questions. I will start off with uh, the part of the magic. It's kind it's of soft, a and I think you are breaking up. Ah, okay. Um, my question is about magic. How can we harvest it? How can we use it? What kind of practices? How can we increase our magical power? Okay. First of all, it's very weak right now. It only has evolved about 6% to 7% since 2012, where it was reintroduced into your atmosphere, into Mother Earth. And then when the fourth dimensional energy went through, it, it actually gained some energy there as well. But you must study. It's a very ancient thing as well. But um, you're going to discover, and they are going to discover, that there are new ways to use it for health and for prosperity and things of this nature. But it must be studied and used properly because there are dark magics and there are negative beings that use them, and they know that the magic is increasing as well because they have been continuing to use them since the Dark Ages, and they see that their energies are getting greater. But on the positive side, there are many that are discovering that they have what was called white magic, and this is also becoming stronger. But they must be careful. They must understand their, this new introduction of magic needs to be studied because uh, there are few on the, on the earth that understand it in its purest way at this time. Some books will be written very soon from those that understand it from the correct view. And these books will um, teach you how to use it more uh, effectively, efficiently, and all these things. I see. And so wait for the books because they will be coming soon, probably within a year. I can't wait. Is there but something? The, the magic will continue to increase. The ascension moves forward. Is there something I can do during this year something that they can read now is uh, chaos chaos magic it, group is it a good group well look up magic on your internet positive magic white magic and see if there's anything new there if it's all old material then i would not use it too much but i would read any new material on the on magic that there is out there i see and is there a difference between um, magic and psychic uh, abilities and one can amplify the other? From energy other than the psyche. I'm but they sorry, can be used together. Can continue uh, from the start because you were cut off? I see. Psychic is from the mind and magic is from energies that are natural. So they are different, but they can be used together. And you will learn about that as time goes on. Psychic energy is more energy and is part of the brain that has not yet evolved to be open in humans yet, but it is there. Every single person has psychic ability if that part of their brain were to open, if that part of the third eye was to be opened far enough or to understand it in the in the proper ways but magic is something completely different and will be attached to science eventually i see um last question 
uh, I started to learn chemistry, basically everything is atoms and the way that um, the protons and electrons are uh, divided within the atoms. Basically, if we speak about magic, and let's say I want to shoot a fireball, I'm doing a manipulation about on the atoms. I understand your bill. I will, uh, I think I'm, a, I know what you're saying. Yes, uh, both energy healing, psychic abilities, and uh, earth energies such as magic are, do work with uh, the energies of atoms, neutrons, and these things. They are all part of what is part of your universe. You cannot... Um, negate any part of your universe when dealing with psychic energy. You cannot negate any part of your universe when dealing with uh, with magic or with any energies. It all is energy manipulation of some sort. It just has a different source. It does not have the same source. It has a, a but it is about energy manipulation. Okay. Healing is energy manipulation. Hmm. I see. Well, thank you very much. It is all very scientific if you want to look at it. If you were to look at somebody doing healing on a person, they would be able to measure the energy coming from the hands and going into the body. That's scientific. But it shows also that it's going to the body where it's needed, and sometimes it's going throughout the entire body. Why? Because it's something that was throughout the body, yes, if you're doing Joe Ray or Reiki or Tai Chi, the energy caused working with the blood flow that is all through the system. Pain in the back or sciatica or things of that nature, the energy would be going to that area, moving itself more to that area because it goes where it's needed. It goes where it finds the problems. Thank you understand. You You're welcome. I understand. Good. I'm sad that we are breaking up so much today. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of interference in the in the uh, uh, technology today. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the, we have the next person is Peter. 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 Uh, hello, Taker. Much love to you. Much love. I have a quick question. Could you give me an update mm -hmm. on, my, on my DNA infusions? One moment, please. Which ones are you getting? I'd have to ask Sengi, actually. Uh, I have um, about. But if you tell me which ones they are, that'll be helpful so that I can reference them faster. I asked for Yael, uh, Luren, Lurian, uh, Fandorian. Oh, um, yes, you've gotten two of them already. You've gotten the Luren with 5%. And did you feel any difference, or do you feel any difference at this point? I don't the other one is just but starting I... to go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I get or just barely started. Okay, which one was the okay. second one? Which one? Fendorian. Fendorian. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you. Much love. Did you feel any differences as those were given? Yes, I felt. Uh... Strong vibrations uh, to the point that basically I couldn't sleep at night, which is okay. I'm used to it. Uh, I enjoyed yes. the energy. And it was wonderful. Yes. Yes. Lirin will help with toning of the muscles. It will also help with skill clarity. Fendorian will help brighten the chakras and maybe start a kundalini within you, uh, make you more clear minded and uh give you a greater understanding of spirituality perfect thank you much love yes 
Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Christine. Christine. Hello, Takur. How are you? Greetings. Greetings. Hello, I am fine. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me, um, I don't get much sleep at night, and I'm wondering if it's because I'm busy. Part of it is, yes, part of it is that you're busy. The other part is that there are some um, medical things that are concerning your body, and they are being with energies of the brain. Now, what I mean to by that is that that is psychic energy at work through the body during the sleep period. There has been pain relief. Also, there's been infusions, but there has been of of um, illnesses throughout the body. But your mind is working on them in your sleep. Oh, that's kind of helpful. <laughs> yes. Okay. You will sleep. Uh, now you will sleep again. Not not long from now. Okay. Um, what I was going to ask is, do you um, think that I would need an infusion from something, or am I just getting enough now? Or um, we could give you an infusion for more sleep. It would slow down the <laughs> healing process a little, but that's all right. Yeah, I I don't mind that. I could always take a nap. Okay. Right. Thank you very much, Takur, and it is so nice to hear from you again. Thank you. Okay, um, Marlene has a question. Marlene. Greetings, Takur. Um, Greetings. I would like to address quantum technology, yes. uh, specifically um, concerning our researchers on surface. It seems that not too many of them are versed in quantum technology. Um, not too many of what? of our researchers on surface are, are versed in quantum technology. Um, how advanced are we at this, at this point, please? It depends on where you're looking on your planet. If you're going to the secret space program, they're very advanced and you would not believe how much, they, how much technology uh, beyond that which you are using that they are using. They are incredibly advanced, but that is why they are secret. There are many places on your planet that are doing studies that are developing quantum theories and quantum electronics and technologies. Now, they have backwards engineered many different um, technologies from alien ships and things of this nature, so they do have a greater understanding of how technology in space is made. The problem is they do not have the power sources. So the power sources have evade them at some point. But they are starting to learn from um, some other aliens that are giving them information that they aren't really supposed to be doing, but they are, that these power sources can be gotten by your people. And they're starting to... Uh, filter information to them about these sources. These particular aliens want the, to see the Earth destroy itself because they are power sources beyond what you can possibly imagine at this point. Now, there are two different power sources that have been made and revealed to humankind that are beyond um, earthly definition. Let's put it that way. And uh, they are being used and tested in, in different ways. Now, the, um, what is it called? The, there is a, a machine underneath the earth that is doing a lot of testing for these. The, uh, yes, it's a co collider, the hydro collider. I think that's what it's called. Hi, Hadron Collider. Hadron Collider. There it is. I couldn't think of the name of it. But it is being used to do quantum experimentations. And they are advancing all the time. And they are learning that the Hadron Collider has its limitations. And so they need to be very careful. Thank you. 
Um, there is a professor in, in, in a university close uh, where I live um, who um, specializes in his research is quantum. Um, is there any message that you that can be conveyed to him from me, please? Yes, the energy is your future in every in every way. Um, energy savior of your planet but it can also be the destroyer so remember have him keep his thought processes about higher energy uh, to himself for the time being because those that think that uh, he may have uh, answers to uh, military questions will want to talk to him and you do not want to use this energy in a military way yes absolutely thank you very much for your guidance um i have a second well. question please yes uh, at the end of october uh we attended an intergalactic council meeting um is there uh, from your perfect perspective is there any information that you can provide um uh, at this point um well, you Came out. Yes. Earth meeting, unfortunately, but they did have representation. I'm sorry, you were breaking up. I didn't understand what you said. Uh, several different things. They blue avian control of the solar system. That was a very big subject because there were certain species that thought that. It was unfair that certain species are allowed to stay in the solar system where others were sent out and others were brought in in their place because um, they felt that they had just as much right to be there. However, it is the purpose that they're looking at for uh, expelling or bringing in out of the solar system. So. That was a very big discussion. Also, the ascension was part of the discussion, but it continues on its own, and there's no real outside interference as far as uh, uh, interfering with the prime directive, as you would call it. it. It's going on the way it always has. Some aliens are able to inf infiltrate into the Earth's uh, population, and that will always be but and they are undetected and we cannot detect them either because of the way they that they're uh have been able to make their dna almost undetectable in a human form so there are human born aliens all the time and there are those that are walk-ins and those that are uh just coming from outside your planet and in mingling with the earth so that is actually not permitted some of those things are not permitted but they're happening anyway but no one is actually directly messing with the prime directive or the social attitudes of the people at least not that we are aware of at this time but that could be also something that's being masked. Thank you. Um, is the portal between... Yes, go ahead. Well, there's so many subjects, but continue. Go ahead if you want, please. Oh, no, no. I'll go ahead. Um, I just want to know, is the portal between the two Earths, are they, is it still operational? It is. Um, they have taken it up and down several times because for one reason or another. But right now it is operational. It's not being used very much, but it is operational. Okay. Thank you very much for your input. Always appreciate You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. And uh, as far as the galactic meeting is concerned, there was probably six or seven other very important subjects some not dealing with the earth whatsoever but dealing with um the war on the other side of the uh, milky way and things of that nature so yes many subjects were approached or broached whatever word you want to use 
in the council. Um, do you have any guidance to give humans to in order for us to clean up, clean up our mess, please? Because we were talking earlier to Elika and about the uh, full disclosure and the galactics coming in and. I am. My understanding is that uh, you guys won't be coming in officially, quote unquote, until we clean up our mess. Well, the thing is, we can give you all the advice in the in the world and have done so at galactic meetings and such, but you're not taking it. So it's it's sort of a. I can give you more advice, and I can give the earth the advice it needs to clean up its act, but they're not taking it because greed. And power are in still in a great influence on your planet. So those two things have got to be put at ease. I have got to uh, mellow out some because they are they are very hateful powers. Um, they cause a lot of damage and destruction. Thank you. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. It will be a pleasure to see all of you on the colonies. Thank you. Um, there's a question from Temple. Hi, Temple Tucker. Beautiful. Blessing. Hello. Um, I have a question about healing. Um, I have been having a pain in my lower left side of my stomach area for maybe like two weeks. And um, this morning I tried to do a small healing on it, but I'm wondering if... I can heal it myself, or I don't think it's an update, but I'm not quite sure. If you could just give me some advice, if there's any herbs yeah. or anything, well, and what is going on. Thank you. I'm glad you asked as well. Yes, everyone can heal themselves. Many believe they cannot, and they go, I can heal everybody else, but I can't heal myself. That is not right. You can heal yourself you have the energies to do so within you. And if you understand that holding your hands on your body in the place where it hurts or in a place where you feel want to feel the energy move through your body, you can heal yourself. Now, are you going to heal yourself if you place your hands on your body for five minutes, uh, five minutes and only do that once every other week or every week? No. When you're healing yourself, you need to do it every day. You must take at least 15 to 20 minutes out of the day and do your self-healing. It will work. Your energy works within you because it is not all your energy. If you are tired after you do it's available to you, you need to start using the energies of those that want to help the universe mother earth spiritual energy all these energies are there to help you with your healing they are pure energies so if you put your hand on your the place that hurts for 20 minutes a day you and you do that every single day for a while you will be healed there is no question but you must do it every day to heal yourself. Now, those that you are healing outside, they come to you maybe once a week. It will take a longer period of time for those people to have complete healing. However, once they get into an, um, a routine of coming every week, the energy stays with them longer and longer and longer, and they will start to heal in greater and greater and greater ways. Now, that is something that is not well known to the humans, or to you, humans. But we understand that energy builds up. It's pure. It's beautiful. But you, your bodies can be like a battery and store energy. That is what it does to keep you alive. You are a living battery in the sense that you are that energy stored. And you can release it. And you can feed it. And this energy that Reiki, Joe Ray, Chai Chi, all these give you, is feeding that battery as well as healing those injuries that, or 
whatever needs to be healed. So yes, you you may be able to heal yourself, but you must believe it and must apply. Buy it as. Thank Does you. anybody have a question about that? <clears throat> um, so, is there any for my specific problem? Is there any like herbs that I can use or oils for that that would help in addition to the healing every day? If you have vitamin deficiencies, I would use the vitamins to help you heal with your energy. Because uh, most of the time I find that uh, the, the herbs, although very good, some people give you this and that and the other thing, but um, they don't have enough of that particular vitamin or mineral to help as efficiently. So check and see if you need D or K or B12 or whatever it is or in your system system and have that help you with your healing as well there are herbs and spices that are but you a lot of these things you have to take in precise measurements for them to heal you uh, better and so you have to go to an herbologist or someone that knows exactly how to use them whereas vitamins the excess usually is not stored but is passed off through the urine and feces and through the sweat but there are certain uh, certain vitamins you don't want to take too many of but um most humans do not okay excellent thank you so much you're welcome okay uh we have a question from liney liney how are you i'm good thank you how are you today wonderful Oh, lovely, lovely to speak to you. Thank you. Um, actually, funny enough, I have a healing request. Very good. Um, I don't want to say the person's name, um, but I think you might work out who it is. It's um, a friend of mine, a close friend of mine. It's a Mao, and a friend of Jim's, and a friend of Angela's. His daughter, I'll say her name. His daughter Julia is very poorly at the moment. It's just um, a healing request. Very well. I know who that you speak of. And I wanted to say congratulations to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, also, um, the Galactic Reiki that's going to be going on soon, is that I've always had an interest in it. Is that something that I would benefit from learning? Is it what? Is it something that, and um, the Galactic Reiki, um, is that something I would benefit from learning? Yes. The Galactic Reiki, let me explain what it is. Galactic Reiki is the Reiki that we found around the galaxy and universe that also works on the Earth. Now, not all Reiki or not all energy modalities work with humans, but these particular uh, symbols and energies do work with humanity. So therefore, we are happy to introduce them to your peoples. Now, one of the symbols is actually uh, a gift from Mother Earth, and that is the uh, Rainbow Pyramid. She actually is the one that gave that uh, particular symbol, but we are using it in Galactic Reiki because it is a new symbol and one that is very powerful. So we will be giving you several symbols and history about some of the symbols as well, why they work, why they don't work on some species, why these particular ones work with humans, and things of that nature. And we will be discussing the um, other healing modalities that are on Earth and why they are have been weakened to some extent and, and why these are actually maybe a little stronger but the, the, it is true that Joe Ray is still very strong, that Reiki is still strong, Tai Chi is strong, but certain symbols within their, uh, within their uh, group sex sessions have weakened a bit because of the change in the energies. So we will be discussing all those things. 
happens. Yeah, I, I, I think it sounds really interesting. Um, just one more thing to occur. Um, sometimes, um, quite often in the evening, I get like, um, it feels like a, a sensation like, or like a shiver at the back of my head on the left. Do you know if it's somebody or? Do that, but I would think that it is someone and someone letting them know, selves, uh, letting you know that they are there and they are probably working with your children or getting permission for something. I would think that it would be a permission of some sort. Okay, because I've been getting it for quite a while now, sometimes more than others, especially when I went on holiday this year. I felt it every single evening. I see, because they were asking if they could work with your children outside of the home. Oh, right. Okay, I didn't, I didn't know. I have no idea. You, they okay, work with William and Henry both. Uh, more with William than Henry, but uh, they work with both of them. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Greetings. Yes, we have another question, and it's from Nivi. Nivi, greetings. Hi, Ticker. How are you? I am very well, thank you. Um, I have a question about uh, colloidal gold. Can you tell me what are the benefits of using it? Colloidal gold? Colloidal gold. It's uh, gold suspended in water. Well, it does have its thing that's very useful at this time. It, it is, it actually, gold has magical properties. And when the gold is, magic on your earth is uh, come up another at least 10%, it might have much more benefit. Gold is going to be a healthy thing. But I can't tell you much about it right now. Is it the same as the monoatomic gold? Not quite, no. But close. And uh, can there is the reasons there is a difference in it is that there is one element extra in the colloidal. Hmm. And uh, are you aware of a school of magic called chaos magic? The use of sigils as uh, focal points. Chaotic magic. Uh, chaos magic. It's a new school of uh, magic in uh, recent years. They use a. I would not say to get involved with that. Anything involving chaotic magic would be uh, to be destructive in some way. I know they say that they are positive, but there are some spells within that uh, group that are not healthy. Can I use the knowledge uh, for my own very uh, for my own benefit for a positive? It's positive. Now remember, when they say chaotic magic, that means that they're taking something and making it chaotic to produce something that is not so um look into that more closely if you would i know their main mission is to increase the magic of this dimension yes i i understand that but i think they come from a basically a black magic background uh, and they are trying to uh they are trying to uh make people think that it's not but it's the most powerful magic that there is right now because it's what's been carried through from generation to generation uh, the most powerfully is the black magic. And so please do not get caught up in that because it can be, they can appear to be very positive, but it, it be check that out. I, I'm not sure that it is. Wonder. I will have to look into it myself. Uh, Tikur, this is here. Quick question. Um, one of my friends uh, is doing sun gazing, and he told me about it. And he told me that after a, a certain amount of time that you practice in it, uh, it actually opens something behind your eyes that allows uh, the sun rays to 
um, feel you in a better way or do certain things. Uh, it's basically open something, but it's not the panini and it's something really just behind the eyes. And I was wondering if there's infusions to it, do it, the same effects. Well, it I see, I know what sun gazing can do. It can open up the uh, third eye a little bit more, and that can give a greater health to the, the the system and make things feel better and things of that nature. I'm just, all I'm saying, Sheer, is to be careful of anything called chaotic magic. I I the name to me says negative, but if it is a positive. That's fine, but I, I think that they are trying to um, uh, influence positive people to become involved in this, in something that's very, very, very old. And, and then they are gathering the new with it. So if anything seems unseemly to you or Does not resonate with yes. If it's positive, go ahead. Sun gazing, yes, I can see that there are positive effects to that. Um, but is there a way to do an infusion to do the same effect? Because I know it's something else. It's open something else in the brain, not the pineal gland. Uh, it's not the pineal gland, correct? It is part of the brain. <clears throat> it is part of the psychic brain. Is it possible to have an infusion to have the same effect? Yes. It is possible to have that effect, yes. I see. And also I think I know what you said. You broke up a couple little times, but yeah, you, it is possible to amazing to get that effect, yes. I see. Um also about chaos magic, they just um, they enjoy using explosive language. They're very. Uh, they they like to put it uh, very volatile uh, uh, language more, I think, than uh, the actual use of magic. But I do know they summon some entities, and that might not be positive. That's why I stay away from that kind of magic. But I, I do want to attract myself. I, I use positivity in every sigil I create. <laughs> Very good. It has its roots in the black magic that is uh, 20 or 30,000 years old on your planet. Thank you very, Careful very much. Careful with that. It's very, very powerful. And yeah, well, there remain. So I would not. It... Please. Yeah. Well, their main goal is like they dream about creating fireballs. They don't have any like we want to oh, destroy yeah. the world. They're like one of my friends is in that those kind of communities, and he says that their basic dream is to create a fireball, to have the ability to do so. Create what? A fireball. A fireball. A fireball. If, uh, using magic. I see. A fireball is sometimes a negative symbol but it can be a positive one as well so that is where i think that they are using a little bit of trickery to influence uh positive people into their negative realm hmm. okay we will uh, check it out uh, with very suspicious uh, mindset very good thank you be very careful i would hate to lose you to this because it would change your mission no, no, don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> yeah, but we will be very glad if you could also teach us. <laughs> I can I can I interject something about it? Yes. Um basically any kind of energy manipulation that you do in the in the world, it all comes with the intent that you do it. And anything exactly. that is ego based like I want this, I want a power, I want that. It comes with, together with the karma that's in that energy. The only thing that you can really do to affect any kind of change that's lasting in the world is to work on yourself and improve yourself. 
Because when you're only looking outward, you're only going to attract more outward things. So it may be exciting and intoxicating to think that you can interact with beings that can do your bidding. But just realize that those beings know your ego wants. And you can say, I have great intention, but it's just like being on a you know, busy street. If you're standing in the middle of the street and there's big trucks going by, you might get hit by one without any intention of ever having that. But just realize that whatever energy you are in, you will attract anything and everything that is part of that energy. And anything that is not truly coming from love is Correct. going to be not love, no matter in exactly. what, no, no matter in what degree. So chaos magic is rooted in black magic. There are mi very many mystery but in, schools. In this the particular highest, key. Yeah, but in the, the highest ma ma magic schools of the highest magic, the only thing that their true goal is is to know themselves and that knowing themselves brings them inward. It's not an outward manipulation of power. Yes. Well, be careful because magic can be very seductive. The strong, the more power that you control, the more seductive it can become. And so that is why I say be careful. Yeah. Is there a recommended school of magic that you can recommend to us? Time. Hogwarts doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, we do have a question from the chat. Um, it was, I, I'm going to ask, um, it was from, uh, well, Trinity came inside, so she asked her question. It's from JD. JD, JDD, that's a, I don't, that's a nice name. Um, had an experience in meditation where um, he had a telepathic, he or she, I don't know, had a telepathic connection to um, their guides, themselves, and their dog, Chris. And they felt like they guided him back to spirit. And can you talk about anything like that? I hope well, I said that, that, J.D. Right. Is, that is interesting because you can, in meditation, reach out to others. And in, in this particular meditation, he connected himself with his higher self, first of all, and then uh, continued to expand outside the body to connect with another with another creature and this is possible and yes it is very possible that you did affect the thought process of this animal because it would be it, it probably saw yes i i see that that there was a very definitely this could happen okay and then there was another so, thing. oh go ahead did you have more? Um, That's there, all right. Okay. And then uh, Lily Pad Paula has several questions about cats. She says she's got this street cat that she's always coming to her door meowing for food. So she feeds her. However, she meows a lot and starts to be annoying. She wants to know what's wrong with her. And then she also says, how can she work on her cat allergy? So she's attracting cats, but she's allergic to them. <laughs> Since this cat is annoying her, this is part of the allergy. When you are not one with Mother Earth or do not fully comply with all the things on the planet, there are some likes and dislikes with some of the things that are on the Earth. And so when you find yourself in compliance with all the things on Mother Earth, your allergies start to dissipate. At least the natural ones do. Because how can you be aligned with Mother Earth and then be sick with her creatures. That's not possible. So it is that there is some kind of misalignment with the Earth and the environment of the Earth or the energies of the Earth. Now, there is allergies to plastic and rubber and things that are not natural, which that is understandable. But if you have natural allergies to animals, dust, leaves or grass these things can be overcome by being um closer to mother earth lay upon her uh talk to her 
uh, become one with her, and then she will help you to overcome those things that are illnesses. Now, the other problem with the cat is that she's very talkative. She's actually trying to tell you something, and I'm not sure what it is, but it's it, it seems like um, she is wanting to tell you about where she is from and why she comes to your door. Now, hopefully you will overcome your allergies and be able to understand a little bit about the suffering of this cat because I'm sure the cat is going through some trauma and needs someone to talk to. So therefore, you are it. But remember what I said. Become closer to Mother Earth Make yourself one with her. Feel her. Comp comply with her, and you will find your allergies subsiding. Because you, when you are at one with Mother Earth, you cannot be at odds with her creatures. Allergy-wise, that is. Thank you for that. Um, Trinity said that she has a question about um, uh, her, that she feels like she has a brick wall around her mind, and she wants to know what can she do to help clear it. It's a different Trinity that's a, that's in the chat. I see a brick wall around the mind. I'm not sure what that would that would stop all thoughts going in and out. Well, that's what she um, says. She says no energy seems to be able to get through. She just feels blocked. How can she clear it? I would, I would, uh, is she able to meditate? Um, I don't, yes, I think she can um, meditate. I don't meditate know if she is though. With the intention, <laughs> you must sit in um, a meditation with the intention to destroy this blockage. What this is, is your mind has decided that it doesn't want any more input at this time. It's trying to understand that the input that it already has, but uh, that does not mean that it's not that you can't have more. So I would do a meditation to destroy this blockage. Your meditation must be intentioned and pure and when you're doing this meditation, picture the third eye, the heart, and the soul as a triangle, and go through the triangle and to try to break this blockage. All right. Thank a triangle you. is a symbol of great power. Yes. And so moving through the triangle will help you to... Uh, Find the answer to why this is there and perhaps break it. She says, actually, she can't meditate. That's what she said. So you did answer uh, the question a little. Then I would have several med people meditate for you. That's always. There's someone in this room that wants to have prayer for them also. So before we leave, we will also do prayer for these people that are here and for the blockage that she is a feeling right may i say something certainly so i've been hosting some light language meditations because english sometimes just gets in the way so check out reiki with will light language meditations with the aquarium fire one of them may be able to help Yes, there are other modalities that may be able to help her. Prayer, Reiki, and Aquarian Fire, all these things. Mantras. And mantras. And so I believe it can be broken. But I believe that her mind has put this up to block her from more stimuli because it, it felt like it had enough for now. But I think that it will come down and we will help it, help it to come down. Yes. You know, I just missed what you, because I was typing in the chat, um, but I know that when I meditate, I see always a triangle. And when I go to channel, I sort of ride the triangle and that sound 
up the vibration. That's exactly my visualization. So the triangle is well, I whenever I do my meditations, I bring the third eye, the heart, and the soul together as a triangle. And then I pass through that triangle to get beyond this place. I think it is time for prayers and blessings. Okay, thank you very much. Who would like to be a part of that? You have one. Okay, let's see who else. Anyone in our room Ray? wants to be a, do a prayer? Ray is yes. here to do a blessing. Perfect, Ray. Anyone in our Anyone and Temple would like to in our room as well. So Ray, then Excellent. Temple. Well. Yeah, I guess well. And Will also. Yeah. So that's Will three. As well. <laughs> Temple, do you want to go first? Sure, I can go first. All right. Tuka hayata shanatika, kuboya lalikanata, kuhunia shatita kayamo o tia kalayata, upukoya nasha, tika le hayanata, kina boyata, kubuhutiata nasha. Utila hianata, kumama mayata, kulehio honiatasha, katahi, kuleyala, kupu oyanashata, kumayasha, tu hi kiala yona diapa o, tu kiashana, katahi, uya muyata. Namaste. I'm letting Jim come back so he can interpret that. One moment. Who can measure love? For love is unmeasurable in all ways. There is a time when love is poured out and a time when it trickles out. But even the smallest bit of love cannot be measured for its unsurpassing beauty is eternal. With eternity and the things of eternity, you cannot measure them adequately. Love cannot be put into a configuration that can be figured out. But it is a thing that is eternal, and it is the most powerful thing in the universe. The greeting with love, the heart that is full of love, will always pass through into eternity with great ease. Go ahead, Ray. May the blockages of the mind be dissipated, for you have shown me working with you can do that. Help those who have the same, for many have gone through it before. Let it be a test. Let it be a strengthening of one spirit. Let it be a learning lesson for those like it has for myself. Focus not on pain, but that of love. Know that all accomplishment comes from lessons learned. Release your pains and ask for forgiveness. Amen. Well, yes.
The sun rises on the good and the bad as well. But when it rises, it sees all. Let us know that even in our weakest times, we can call on the greatest energies of the universe to help us through. Let us know that we are being observed at all moments and that we cannot escape the eye of God. And if you think that you can hide what you are doing, what you're feeling and what you're thinking, you are incorrect. For he always knows who and what you are doing. So be awesome. Be awesome, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you that so much. That is wonderful, yes. Hmm. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. It's lunchtime. <laughs> so we will let you go for now. Thank you, for everybody, for your input. I thought it was really wonderful. And um, everybody thanks you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Jim. All right. Have a great day. Oh, oh I, oh, before we go, I just want to say goodbye, but I just want to give the announcements before we go. This is human cause. We're already oh. we're all ready to go. Uh, this is Human Colony. If you would like to uh, be in the room so you can ask questions uh, directly, you can go to humancolony.org and or hucolo.org and you can join. We have a couple of events coming up, and that is our event in Sedona, which will be February 1st through the 6th. That's also on the website, as well as a listing for the Galactic Reiki class that's coming up on November 25th and 26th. It'll be taught by Jim and Takur. So there's still some places there. Um, some other things that are coming up is in January, I will be doing a 40-day uh, mantra for peace. We'll be doing 40-day mantra, and I'll be employing some of my uh, teacher training for exact mantra, Vedic uh, mantra pronunciation. So we'll be doing that. And then also I'm going to be uh, initiating a class called uh, Sacred Sound, and we will talk about the power of the voice, the power of sound. So check the Human Colony website for that. That sounds good. Yes. If you decide to do the Galactic Reiki, hurry up so we can get those uh, registrations all processed. I want to. I'd like to know how many packets to send out, or I'm going to be sending out um, Galactic Reiki symbols to all the people that are in involved. There is a couple that aren't in the system yet, so I am working on that now. So, but I do want to be able to get everybody some information beforehand. So if you're going to do the class, please sign up as soon as possible so I can get that information to you before the class starts. All right. Thank you so much. And, and much love to everyone. Namaste to you. All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Everyone wave. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.